Hair loss is more than just a cosmetic issue, it's a deeply personal concern that can affect how we see ourselves. Whether it's noticing a few extra strands on your pillow or realizing that your once thick mane is starting to thin, the emotional impact is undeniable. But what if you could take control? What if the secrets to maintaining healthy hair were within your reach? Today, we'll explore the various causes of hair loss and discover natural, effective solutions. Guiding us on this journey is Dr. Barbara O'Neill, a renowned health educator who has helped countless individuals understand and address their hair loss concerns. Segment 1. Understanding Hair Loss The Root Causes Hair loss is a complex issue with multiple contributing factors, but before diving into remedies, it's crucial to understand why hair loss happens in the first place. As Dr. Barbara O'Neill explains, hormones are the messengers in our bodies, and when they're out of balance, they can wreak havoc on our hair. Hormonal imbalances, especially in women, can disrupt the natural hair growth cycle, leading to thinning and shedding. This can occur during life stages such as pregnancy, menopause, or due to thyroid disorders. Early age, and so from about the age of uh, 30, she began to dye her hair. Now you can get a hair dye made of henna, and henna is a plant that can dye your hair, and that is not toxic. But my friend did not use that one. She used a chemical hair dye. And little by little, it was killing off her, her uh, follicles where the hair grows. So it can be chemicals on the hair. Another friend of mine did not like her very curly hair and so all her life, from probably about her late teens right up until her 50s, she straightened her hair. Now the solutions that they use to straighten the hair or for people with straight hair that want curly hair, it is a very toxic chemical. So what happens is, if a person wants to straighten their hair, they would what the hairdresser does is pull the hair over great big rods like that. And so the, the curly hair that's this curly, of course, gets pulled over them and that straightens it. But if a person's got straight hair and they want curly hair, well, the rods are that big and they stretch the hair around and around and around. So whether it's to straighten the hair or whether it's to curl the hair, they put this top. You can make a mix that you can put on your hair. And this mix is, let's, let's make up the mix. So half a cup of coconut oil, and half a cup of castor oil. Castor oil is a very thick oil, but castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil. So when that is put onto the scalp, it penetrates even deeper. Coconut oil is a very nourishing oil. It's an antifungal oil, antibacterial oil. But what you also can put with that, so now you've got a cup of oil there. To that cup of oil, you can add 10 drops of rosemary essential oil. Rosemary is a herb that's a specific for the scalp. Rosemary essential oil. So you could make up this mix in a jar and mix it very, very well. And maybe once a week, you, you massage it into the scalp. Your hair will be very oily, of course, but you massage it into the scalp. Just even the massaging into the scalp stimulates blood supply to the hair follicles. That castor oil penetrates very deep and wherever it penetrates, it can revive life into that area. And the coconut also is a very nourishing oil and the rosemary essential oil stimulates. Every herb stimulates different parts of the body and this rosemary herb is a specific for the scalp. The massaging, so leave it in as much as you can. Maybe you choose a Sunday when you may be going to be home all day. And at the end of the day, you wash out now you might need to put shampoo on a couple of times to get all that oil out. Just use a little bit of hot water and then, and then an Stress, another major factor, is often overlooked in discussions about hair health. High stress levels can trigger a condition known as telogen effluvium, where a significant amount of hair prematurely enters the resting phase of the hair growth cycle, resulting in noticeable shedding. Dr. O'Neill points out that stress impacts every part of our body, including our hair. Anemia, 
or low iron levels is another critical factor. Iron is essential for producing hemoglobin, a protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen to the body's tissues, including the scalp. Without enough iron, hair follicles may not receive the oxygen they need to thrive. Pounds should aim for two liters, while a 200 pound person might consider three liters, acknowledging individual variability and environmental factors. Now, when you look at that, I think you'd agree with me, the nation's dehydrated. And Dr. B's book, One of the Body's Many Cries for Water, it actually ex explains why all of these ailments are happening. The other title to his book is, He's Not Sick, He's Thirsty. The other title to his book is, don't, or subtitle, Don't Treat Thirst with Medications. <laughs> Because when you do take medications, what does that do to your hydration status? Lessens it even more. I know as a psychiatric nurse, you'd, you know, you'd be talking to the patients and you can tell their mouth is dry by the way they're talking. So what do they do? Oh, Coke, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> is that helping? Not at all. In fact, it's contributing to the fact that they're still in the psychiatric hospital because our brain is 85% water. From the neck down, we're 75% water. Our brain is a hydroelectric system. No hydro, no electricity. A person can actually develop negative thought patterns in a dehydrated brain. And most people know that their headache possibly is due to dehydration. My husband rang me one day, three o'clock in the afternoon. He was driving. He said, I don't know what's the matter with me. I've got a migraine. I can hardly drive. So you know what my first question always Finally, damage to hair follicles, often caused by tight hairstyles, chemical treatments, or excessive heat styling, can lead to hair thinning and loss. The more you stress your hair follicles, the more likely they are to weaken over time. Segment 2, Exploring Natural Remedies Now that we've examined the causes of hair loss, let's explore some of the natural remedies that Dr. Barbaro O'Neill recommends. These aren't just old wives' tales, these remedies are backed by both tradition and emerging science. Coconut oil is a staple in many natural hair care routines. Known for its deep moisturizing properties, coconut oil can penetrate the hair shaft, providing essential nutrients and keeping the scalp healthy. Dr. O'Neill highlights coconut oil is more than just a conditioner. It has antimicrobial properties that protect the scalp from infections. Castor oil, another potent natural remedy, is rich in ricinoleic acid, which improves circulation to the scalp, encouraging hair growth. Dr. O'Neill suggests using castor oil as a regular scalp massage oil to stimulate hair follicles. For those looking to go beyond oils, rosemary essential oil can be a game changer. This herb has been used for centuries to enhance hair health. When added to carrier oils like coconut or castor oil, rosemary can stimulate blood circulation in the scalp, thus promoting hair growth. You can make a mix that you can put on your hair. And this mix is, let's, let's make up the mix. So half a cup of coconut oil. and half a cup of castor oil. Castor oil is a very thick oil, but castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil. So when that is put onto the scalp, it penetrates even deeper. Coconut oil is a very nourishing oil. It's an antifungal oil, antibacterial oil. But what you also can put with that, so now you've got a cup of oil there, to that cup of oil, you can add 10 drops of rosemary essential oil. Rosemary is a herb that's a specific for the scalp. Rosemary essential oil. So you could make up this mix in a jar and mix it very, very well. And maybe once a week, you, you massage it into the scalp. Your hair will be very oily, of course, but you massage it into the scalp. Just even the massaging into the scalp stimulates blood supply to the hair follicles. That castor oil penetrates very deep, and wherever it penetrates, it can revive life into that area. And the coconut also is a very nourishing oil, and the rosemary essential oil stimulates Every herb stimulates different parts of the body and this rosemary herb is a specific for the scalp. The massaging, so leave it in as much as you can. Maybe you choose a Sunday when you may be going to be home all day 
and at the end of the day you wash out. Now you might need to put shampoo on a couple of times to get all that oil out. Just use a little bit of hot water and then and then a Hibiscus flowers, often overlooked in Western hair care, are another powerful natural remedy. When crushed and mixed with coconut oil, hibiscus flowers can create a nourishing paste that strengthens hair roots and prevents hair loss. Dr. O'Neill frequently emphasizes the effectiveness of this remedy in her workshops. Pictures them white, puts aluminium with it so that it runs freely, and there's your table salt. Table salt is a dangerous is a dangerous salt because we now have two very harsh minerals that if you were to inject both of those into the blood you would die. There's two harsh minerals and they need all the other 90 to soften them and balance them. The highest concentration... Segment 3 Lifestyle Changes for Sustained Hair Growth In addition to natural remedies, Lifestyle choices play a significant role in maintaining healthy hair. Dr. Barbara O'Neill stresses that what you put into your body is just as important as what you put on your hair. A balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins provides the necessary nutrients for hair growth. Getting enough sleep is another crucial factor. Your body heals and regenerates during sleep, Dr. O'Neill reminds us, and this includes your hair follicles. Most people need around seven to eight hours of quality sleep per night to ensure their body, including their hair, remains in peak condition. Regular exercise is also vital as it improves blood circulation throughout the body, including the scalp. When your scalp receives more blood flow, it gets more oxygen and nutrients, which promotes healthier hair growth. Dr. O. Neal advises. ...which help counteract the hypertensive effects of sodium. Remember Dr. B? He cured 3,000 cases of stomach ulcer just with water. Just with water. How simple is that? So simple. So this man has been all over the world trying to get help and then he came to a health retreat in the hills in Victoria and learnt the conditions to give his stomach for healing. So we come down the gastrointestinal tract and we come to the pancreas. Here's the pancreas. And the pancreas releases two hormones into the blood and it also releases, releases hormones into the gut. And or enzymes into the gut, hormones into the blood. What are the hormones going into the blood from the pancreas? It's insulin and glucagon. Both of these hormones require a large amount of water to be able to be made properly. So if someone's dehydrated, can you see that can contribute to diabetes? From the gut, they're great big long names, so I'm just going to give you, there's about four enzymes that are released to finalize the digestion of our food. These enzymes, there's one enzyme that finalizes starch digestion, there's another enzyme that finalizes fat digestion, and that's your polyunsaturated, because remember you're saturated, it's broken down under the tongue, the enzyme under the tongue. And there are two, two enzymes that finalize protein digestion, and that's why when someone has pancreatic cancer, they often die very quickly and they die of malnutrition because the pancreas can't release those enzymes to finalize uh, digestion. And if digestion is not finalized, the food can't get out of, the, out of the gut and into the blood. So let's keep going down the gastrointestinal tract and look at the effect of water. So moving on down the gastrointestinal tract, we come to the we come to the colon. And one of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed. If a person is dehydrated, more water gets taken out than should be taken out, so we're left with rabbit pellets and cement. So constipation can be a result of dehydration. Moving along the gastrointestinal tract to the pancreas reveals its Segment four, stress management and avoiding harsh treatments. As we've already touched on, stress management is crucial for maintaining healthy hair. Chronic stress can lead to hair loss. So finding ways to manage stress, whether through meditation, yoga, or simply taking time to relax can have a profound impact on your hair health. Dr. O'Neill says, reducing stress isn't just good for your mind, it's essential for your hair. 
Finally, it's important to avoid harsh hair treatments. Chemical treatments, excessive heat from styling tools, and tight hairstyles can all cause significant damage to hair follicles. The key is to treat your hair with care and respect. Dr. O'Neill advises, because once your hair follicles are damaged, it can be very difficult to reverse the effects. And glucagon, crucial for blood sugar regulation, rely heavily on adequate water supply. Dehydration can disrupt their production, potentially leading to diabetes or exacerbating existing conditions. Four key enzymes play pivotal roles in finalizing digestion. Starch digestion by amylase, fat digestion by lipase, and protein digestion by proteases. In cases like pancreatic cancer, where enzyme production is impaired, patients often face rapid malnutrition. Inadequate digestion prevents nutrients from entering. While hair loss can be a distressing experience, it's important to remember that you're not powerless. By understanding the root causes and taking a proactive approach with natural remedies and lifestyle changes, you can support your hair's health and potentially slow down or even reverse hair loss. As Dr. Barbara O'Neill has shown us, taking care of your hair is about more than just products, it's about taking care of your overall well-being. 